Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the always positive new music review show where every Thursday I try to go a little bit underground with my Thunderground Thursday series. And today I'm going to be reviewing a band, a person, called Moon King and their album The Audition. Now I don't do a lot of research for these Thunderground Thursdays, I like to just sort of experience the music as it comes, so I don't know much other than this artist apparently is Canadian. The term that I, I came up with while listening to this music, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I really enjoy this album. It's pretty short, it's maybe like half an hour. And I was trying to figure out what's my angle, you know, because I don't just come on here and say, I like something, you know, I'm trying to think like, like, what's my angle? And what I realized was I like this album because it feels garage to me. Now, the thing is, is that garage, I mean, this certainly was not made on a garage. I have no illusions that this guy was sitting somewhere in Oakville, Ontario, in a garage tinkering together, right? I'm sure it was made on a computer, and if there's any garages inv involved, it's the Garage Band app. But it's more the sound, and I think what he was able to do with this is have that rawness, that roughness, that isn't just bedroom. Because I like bedroom music, but bedroom music has a, a polish to it, a sort of forced uh, homogeneity to it. It's not even a word, the homogeneousness. A kind of forced smoothness that I don't really like all the time. So this album is kind of all over the map stylistically. It kind of goes between sort of disco and kind of 80s soft rock and 80s indie rock and stuff like that. But in the end, I, I would just kind of call it garage disco. And, and when I said those words, and I wrote those words down on my notes, I was like, I like that. I like that idea. I wish there was more music like this, music where things are a little bit rougher, a little bit harder to hear, maybe a little bit harder to pick up, but that have that immediacy, which is sometimes, it's a different kind of immediacy than the kind that we get with the computer, right? Just the medium of the computer uh, makes you feel as though you're in somebody's headphones with them. Whereas kind of garage music has that immediacy, but it's the kind of immediacy is sort of a, of a rough push, you know, or a slap. Um, I will say that the lyrics are mostly lost on this album. That's one of my biggest regrets. Um, but I really came to understand the album better this morning. You see, I am still on vacation uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, actually beautiful North Cambridge. Um, and yeah, I grew up in Boston, but I come back here as a tourist now. It's very weird. Um, and, and I was like, okay, so I, we ran out of K-Cups in our Airbnb, so I'm, I went to go get my wife a coffee, you know, and so I was like, oh, I'll just put this music on and I'll see how it is. And when I put it on on my headphones and I was walking in the sun and going to the only place you are uh, you know, allowed to buy coffee in Massachusetts, at least when I was growing up, uh, you know, I, I was walking along and I had the sun going and I had the coffee and I had this music in my headphones and I really got it a lot better. It's a very groovy album. The lyrics, which are pretty hard to hear if you're just listening on a computer, actually come out quite nicely. And I really suggest, seriously, just do this. Just get this album, you know, find it on, on Tidal or, or GarageBand or whatever, or Spotify, I don't know where it is, and just listen to it while going for a walk. The whole thing is a nice, pithy album. And that sounds like I'm criticizing it, but I'm not. It's just a nice, pithy album. Maybe part of the reason I use the word pithy is because its ambitions are not particularly grand. Its auditions are concentrated. I don't know if I said auditions or ambitions. Because the album is about auditioning. That's it. That's, according to his artist bio in Bandcamp, this album is about auditioning. The weird experience of trying to be an actor. I think by extension we can say this is the weird experience of trying to be any kind of artist where you're desperately ser searching for validation, for acceptance, for a paycheck, uh, but like, you know, you basically never get it, right? And so yeah, it's pithy, you know, he's not singing about, I don't know, his girlfriend uh, getting attacked by bees and having to go to the hospital, or not singing about his parents from neglecting him. I don't know anything about this person after listening to an entire album, just within his mind, basically, I don't know anything other than he made a very good explanation, talk, album, about the feelings of the nervousness of auditioning, which I think is pretty cool. And I'm gonna go into it more in detail track by track after I take a sip. Mm. I always get, um, when I, I, I never go to Dunkin' Donuts unless I'm in Boston. Um, 
just that's how I how, how I grew up. But I get I get a, I get flavored with blueberry, but I drink it black. And I don't even like the taste of it, but it just means that when I go to Dunkin' Donuts, I can ask for a small black blueberry and they give me coffee. You should try, you should try it sometime. I would like a small black blueberry and they bring you coffee. So the song I'm going to use as an example, I hopefully I can find a link to this, is the first track off the album, Ed SVP, which stands for Help Please in French, Ed S'il vous plaît. I'll put a link to it up there. Very nice track. Uh, I think it's in French. Well, we'll talk about why it's in French a little bit, just the title. The, the song's not in French. None of this album's in French. About 10% of it is in French with this song, so that makes it very Canadian. Very kind of steely Danish sounding organ and nice guitar groove, and then it becomes like a disco song. It reminds me of Chic, and the first time I listened to it, that's where I got this idea. Like, this sounds like Chic if Chic were a garage band. And I just love that, that idea. Great instrumental breakdown with the guitar doing a little bit of extra work, making kind of a hook. When you listen closely to the lyrics, it's all this sense of desperation. I think still about the auditioning. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. I need your love right now. Ed, s'il vous plaît. Very catchy, very nice. Um, I do think that the presence of French here has two different meanings. One, I think it's a conscious uh, connection to Chic, because Chic obviously would have uh, some parts in French just randomly, like just for no reason, you know, voulez-vous coucher avec moi, or, um, I guess that's not chic, that's produced by Nile Rodgers, oh my god. Who produced L Lady Marmalade? I guess you'll have to tell me that in the comments. But that was a thing in the di in disco, in any event. In the disco era, uh, with songs like Le Freak Say Chic and all that, um, there was this weird thing where people just throw French in there for no reason, I guess to create some kind of sense of exoticism or class or whatever. But then also, I think it is very clearly a, a nod to his Canadian-ness, because one of the great things about Canada is you can't escape a, a second language. I just pray for the day that America becomes like that. I mean, I know it'll be Spanish, but still, eventually, hopefully, we'll pass where every single damn coffee cup will have to say coffee cafe on it, right? It just makes it a better country. Layers and layers and layers of songs on this song, which is really nice. Layers of sound on this song. Um, particularly towards the end, you just hear how well everything's put together, but it still has that roughness. It's kind of small guitar line, lets the groove play out. And then towards the end, you realize, actually, the whole thing sounds a little bit like a loop. I think, I think this guy's playing everything, but it sounds like a loop. And then at the end, it takes everything out except for, like, the cowbell and this wah 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 sound. And all of a sudden, it now sounds like Daft Punk. Like, sounds like Da Funk by Daft Punk at the end. A really nice journey for a fairly simple, very engaging song. I highly suggest you listen to it. The rest of the album continues very much in that vein. Give Me a Break is the next song. Very strong bass line, piercing drums. This song never quite gets going. There's a couple tracks on this that aren't really instrumental, but they're sort of instrumental. Um, you know, Give Me a Break. Right? He's talking about being a, an actor auditioning. He just needs a break. I understood the album a lot better as well watching the videos that are on Bandcamp. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't edit my videos, so I just coughed. And you just had to deal with it, so I'm sorry. No. But uh, <laughs> put in the comments if you're upset with me for coughing and not editing it out. Um, so with the video, there's a very cool thing that happens where you see this like intentional 80s looking vibe, right? The whole album feels very kind of intentionally retro. Um, where it's kind of an 80s looking vibe, like an audition tape, but it's, it's, a, it's a seasoned actor talking to a new actor, giving advice, and that's what happens in these subtitles of the video. And really, like, that gets you into the feeling of the album, that gets you into this project. This is much more of a project, like an art project, than it is just a simple album, you know? And there's a great quote underneath, you better like yourself a lot, because it's all you've got to work with. Good advice. <laughs> I Hate to Miss a Party uh, is a nice kind of gentle, funky beat. This reminds me a bit more of Barry White. has cool kind of cascading drums and just very slight, almost instrumental again. Honey, Honey, Honey now kind of moves over into sort of the ABBA mode, kind of a melodic, hypnotic groove. Um, very interesting line here. If you want everything, you'll never be free. I think that's true. Interesting idea. Survival of the Strongest. I really like this title because it is part of what makes auditioning so fascinating and frustrating. And as an academic, by the way, you audition a lot. Like, that's part of the problem of, like, getting a job as a professor, you know. Um, I did not get 
the most prestigious job that I applied for because my interview, my audition, wasn't great at a more prestigious university. So, of course, I'm happier at the university I'm at than I would have been at Yale. So there you go. Uh, there might have been other reasons I didn't get hired at Yale too. But uh, the very cool kind of uh, like layers with this drum machine, a nice kind of steel drum. There's like this cool kind of like steel drum sound, like ding, 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 going on here. A very New Order-ish New Order -ish 80s guitar line. And the melody actually follows this guitar line. Does some interesting things here. Until I See You Again is kind of a sweeter song, sung by somebody else, I believe. It sounds like a, like a woman here singing, sort of intentionally cheesy. It sort of reminds me of a cross between I Believe the Children are the Future and Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. So if I heard someone say that, I would want to hear that song and see what I meant. Drama Part 2 has got a cool kind of Billie Jean style drum line, languid guitar sounds. Again, it feels sort of like a demo at times. feels kind of instrumental, like cool kind of spaceship sounds as well. Leading into That's Not My Name, it feels almost like they're going through time or he's going through time here with different sort of dance and disco sounds because this sounds almost like Devo or Kraftwerk. The synthesizers and altered voice uh, kind of going on and on. This must be some mistake, that's not my name. You know, like that's not your name on the call sheet or whatever, that, that's not your name. Like you're just the, the anonymousness of auditioning, the feel that just the people who are seeing you have seen a couple hundred other people and they don't care about you or them. And then the album ends with the audition, which just has all these, it, it's basically just a, a, a nice instrumental bed. Reminds me of like a 70s action movie interstitial bit, you know, like where the detective is, uh, like the detective has to like go from one building to another, you know, that the noise they play in between. It sounds like that. Um, and then just these quotes from all these actors talking about how they thought acting would be easy and all that. But in the end, the the the, the audition process is just bizarre and uncomfortable. And I would say this album is bizarre and comfortable. It's a weird, little, interesting, unambitious, but successful, I don't know if I'd say it's unambitious. It has a, a pointed ambition and it achieves that ambition. And most albums don't do that. So I'm gonna be heading back uh, up to Western New York soon. So I just wanted to point out one weird thing in my uh, in my Air Airbnb. There's a bust of Sargon of Akkad in my Airbnb. Now, if you don't know, Sargon of Akkad uh, is also the name of this like weird fascist, terrible YouTuber. So it was weird. I I just don't know why I was here, but I thought I'd show it because enough of my viewers watch other YouTube stuff as well to note that <laughs> this is a weird thing to find if you're super into YouTube like I am to find in there. Anyways, feel free to watch videos about why Sargon of Akkad uh, is a boob, because they're all very good. Okay, well, until next time, uh, we're, I'll hopefully be talking about Kanye. There's the camera.